Potato, cauliflower mash. We're live, YouTube. We're live, Facebook. Potato, cauliflower mash. I'm gonna make that. I got some cauliflower here. And this is right out of Medical Medium recipe. You guys got that recipe now because you have the book now, right? So we're good. We got the recipe. Got some beautiful potatoes, russet potatoes. We got some cauliflower. Got some parsley right here. And I got some water uh, boiling. Pretty excited about this, you guys. Pumped up. Gonna be steaming is what I'm gonna be doing. Steaming. Elena, hi. Good that you're here. Ashley Kiven, good that you're here. You guys, you know, I was like this. Do I take a day off? Do I... Um, so listen, I got a tiny bit of water in the pan, tiny bit of water in the pan, and I have it steaming, and I'm about to throw potatoes in here, cauliflower in here. I'm gonna make the potato cauliflower hash. I mean, do I take a day off? Do I just stop working today? What do I do, right? And I'm like, you know what? We gotta talk about blood draw <laughs> a little bit because I'm telling you, I don't think a lot of people get it, man. I don't think, I think they're all just gonna get the blood sucked right out of them and they're not gonna get better. And they're gonna do just, just they're just gonna do some things that aren't gonna be great. Good that you guys are coming on. All right, happy Easter. Uh, even that, that, yeah, happy Easter it is. That's, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Easter is basically here. Um, hey, Megan. Hey, everybody. Teresa, Tara, Sherry. Woo! Guys are all here. Deanna. Um, I'm, I'm peeling these potatoes. This is the cauliflower mash. I'm peeling these potatoes here. Um... Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Um, making the potato cauliflower mash, doing this right now. How do we find out what is wrong with us without blood draw? No, I want you to get your blood tested. Absolutely. Did you listen to the podcast? You got to listen to the podcast. I explain it all. Medical Meeting Podcast at Apple Podcast. Link is in the description. Blood draw, bloodletting, and vampirism, right? I'm going to talk about Lyme disease as well today. <clears throat> I think Lyme disease, I'm also going to talk about neurological symptoms, tingles, uh, fatigue, numbness, vertigo, burning skin, aches and pains, neck pain, back pain. What I'm doing is I'm peeling the potatoes a little bit, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm making the potato cauliflower mash. It's not about how do we, how do, not getting blood work. I want you guys to get blood work. You guys got good doctors. You go to your doctor. But I talk all about how to do it to protect yourself. It's critical, actually. Because they're taking too much blood from everybody. That's what they do. And you know what? When you're sick, I mean, it can take you down a real wrong direction and really hurt a lot of people. It has. It's actually killed a lot of people, too. Because they stay chronically ill, chronically ill, and they get drained. And guess what the worst part about the blood draw is? The, one of the worst parts is deficiencies. They take from you, then they take from you more, and you get a deficiency. Now you're getting more deficiencies. You can get deficient from all that blood work. This is so scary. Um, Gene, why don't you use why don't you use the potato? I always use potato skins. It's just that this recipe is a different recipe. It's the potato cauliflower mash, and I'm not using the skins. I'll show you the recipe in a second. So I got some water steaming a little bit in the pan right here, you guys. And I'm just, just taking some skins off real quick, right? We're almost there. And um, I'll show you how, to, how we do this. So there we go. It's another potato. Got that. Got some cauliflower too. It's potato cauliflower mash. You know, it's, it's Friday. It's a great day for this. Tara Galloway, amazing podcast. Love it. Incredible. Did you share it with anybody to help protect them so they have the information? Elena, when I go fat-free, I feel fatigue. Are you getting enough calories, number one? First of all, there's a couple of reasons for that. When you're doing the fats, it stimulates adrenaline. So um, fats cause the adrenals to actually flood. So what happens is there, you can actually get addicted to fats. You can get addicted to oils and avocados and nut butters. And, um, and you can get addicted to cheeseburgers, and well, because the reason why, and ice cream, because fats, they make the adrenals run because your adrenals are trying to thin out your blood so that your heart doesn't have to deal with all that fat in your bloodstream, right? So the minute you, you take away those fats, your adrenals, you save your adrenals. But here's what's going to happen. 
you're going to get your adrenals nice and strong. Any day you're fat free, you're going to get your adrenals nice and strong to the point where your adrenals are finally better and there is no fatigue. Another thing too is, um, did you ever feel fatigue before? Or is that just the first time? It's like, or is fatigue one of your symptoms you've been dealing with all this time, right? So think about that. Try trying to be your own detective right there. So I'm peeling these potatoes, you guys. Um, keep your, you know, keep your fats a little low if you want on the lower side, and you can do some great healing. But make sure you get enough calories, though. If you take away fats, because fats are so high in calorie, that's another reason why you might feel some fatigue. You take fats away. They're so high in calories. It's why everybody gets fat. They get stagnant, sluggish livers, and they gain all this weight from fat, fat, all the fat they're eating, right? Once you take that away, you better have some calories. Are you doing enough fruit? Are you, <clears throat> you're also getting fat from every food. I mean, fats are in every single food anyway, but those are just more radical fats, more radical fats when you're doing too many of those. So let's do this. So I got a pan going right now. So I'm going to steam some potatoes. I'm going to steam these up for the cauliflower mash. That's <clears throat> so what we're doing. Just cutting them in little pieces here. Rosie says, I have I have lime time four times. I had lime four times and I've had vertigo and RA. So here's how it works with rheumatoid arthritis. That's caused by Epstein Barr. I talk about that in medical meaning books. Vertigo is caused by Epstein Barr. Okay. Lyme disease is caused by Epstein Barr. You see how it works? Lyme disease is just an inflammation marker. They don't actually find your Lyme bacteria. They just, they're testing for inflammation. And then they place the name of the bacteria on the test. It's criminal. <laughs> but that's what they do. Um, so what happens is, but your real symptoms are Epstein-Barr. I talk about it in the book, um, New Edition. Do you have the New Edition? Medical Medium New Edition, the one that I was just showing earlier? So you can actually learn all about your Lyme disease and how to heal. Melinda, you've healed me from so many of my symptoms. I am forever grateful for you and SOC. Melinda, thank you for being here. Thank you for working hard on your healing process. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Trust me, that means everything to me because that's the whole point. If you're getting your life back, then that that's what gives meaning in my life. That gives me, like, that's the meaning in my life right there. You get your life back. Like, to me, that's what matters. So I'm going to steam some cauliflower in here too, you guys. Place it in here. Get this going. So I'm steaming cauliflower and some potato, talking about blood draw, talking about Lyme disease and neurological symptoms. See, isn't that interesting? Uh, neurological symptoms are all caused by the Epstein-Barr virus and the shingles virus, right? Okay, think about this, okay? And what happens is you get all the vertigo and you get all the vagus nerve stuff and you can get some anxiety too and it tingles and numbness on your body and tinnitus and all this stuff, right? And then you go to a Lyme doctor. They'll just say you got Lyme disease. I'll tell you one thing about Lyme and we'll talk about it in a minute about how it works. So, okay, this is getting steamed up. Get the lid back on. Get that cooking. Cauliflower potato hash. Got five potatoes in there, <clears throat> so that's good. Um, all right, so I got some potatoes in here, steaming up good. Um, maybe I'll throw one more little one in here. Why, that, that's getting hot. Jane Robinson, what treatment do you suggest for uh, hemicrosis? My friend gets one pint. A blood drawn every month and I'm now realizing that doesn't sound good after listening to you well look that's a viral issue so what happens is um, when viruses um, when viruses uh, get into the spleen okay and they get into the liver and they even get into the bone marrow when viruses get in in there we can get that condition and then what they do is they try to, you know, they drain a pint continuously to try to deal with it. But all the deficiencies happen and all these other things. So it's a matter of like, how do we also help with the deficiencies? How do we go after the viral issue and get that better so we get better? And, um, and that's, that's a big part of it there. It's about going after the real problem. That's a Band-Aid. You know, they try to keep things in check by doing that. But I mean, look. 
The doctor knows best for what's going on right there, but what I would recommend, if it was a family member or a friend of mine, if it was happening to me, if it was happening to me, I'd be getting the books, I'd be learning about the viral conditions, and then once you start eating the right foods for the, for the viral issues, once you start taking the right supplements for the viral issues, then all of a sudden, that starts getting better and better and better, and then when it gets better, then they don't have to drain the pint, drain the pint, drain the pipe, pint, you know. So anyway, here is potato cauliflower mash right here. That's what I'm making. I don't know if you guys can see it. So I'm excited. This is medical medium book one with all the Lyme disease, neurological symptoms and information. So what you'll find out there is, is People, anybody can get diagnosed with Lyme disease. Anybody, just need a neurological symptom. Just go to a Lyme doctor and you'll get diagnosed with Lyme disease. That's how it works. All you need is Lyme doctor and some neurological symptoms. You walk into the Lyme doctor's office, well, you, I'm getting kind of weakness in the limb right here, a little weak in the limb. Um, boom, you got Lyme disease. You walk into the doctor's office, I got some tingles and numbness up the side of my neck, side of my head. I got a little pain here that comes and goes. Feel kind of fatigued, you got Lyme disease. You go into a Lyme doctor's office, boom, you leave with a Lyme stamp on your back. Seven ways to Sunday, got that Lyme stamp on your back. That's how it works. Um, so, but really, all those symptoms, if you go into a multiple sclerosis doctor, you'll get a MS tag most likely. You go into just an autoimmune specialist, right, with autoimmune, they'll say you got RA, maybe they'll say you got... Um, something else, right? But they'll say you got something because they'll be like, and they'll pick an autoimmune disease that you have. It doesn't mean if the label's right or not. Maybe they'll just say autoimmune. But any kind of neurological symptoms now, you just get tagged autoimmune, tagged, you know, multiple sclerosis, tagged lupus, tagged CF, you know, C CFS, tagged Lyme disease. But you go into a Lyme doctor's office, boom, you got Lyme. That's it. You can go to 30 doctors and end up at a Lyme doctor and you got Lyme. You know, Lyme was this thing where we finally know what's wrong with everybody. We figured it out. We finally know. We know why everybody's sick. And that's what it's about. It's like, it's like, we finally know what's wrong. It's that tick right there. That's what's wrong with everybody. It's the tick. It's the tick. And, you know, so, um, you know, and I want to read a little bit about Lyme disease right here. But that's, that's, that's how it works. Big blood draw led to vitiligo, uh, Leanne. Wow, yeah, the big blood draws, man. You get the big blood draws, and now you're sick, sicker. If you're already sick, now you're sicker. And then you're sicker, you need another big blood draw, and now you're sicker, and now you're sicker, and that's how it works. I mean, it's, it's, it's you listen, you gotta hear the podcast, though. Look, I could sit here and do a dance, for you guys all day long, but you gotta hear the podcast, Medical Mean Podcast at Apple Podcasts. Please listen to it. Share it with other people. It's the blood draw, bloodletting, vampire, vampirism episode. You you can't miss it. It's critical, critical. You know, um, Cicely says any info on endometriosis. I got it in the books. My God. True cause, what to do, supplements to take, dosages right here and cleanse to heal. It's right here, and you can take the book to your doctor. Ask him. It's okay, or her. It's okay. What are blood draws, Christine? Blood draws are, I'm getting a blood test at the doctor's office. He's going to take seven vials, five vials, 10 vials, 14 vials. If you're sick or got problems, he's going to take blood, right? And I talk about it in the podcast episode, too much blood, and it all gets thrown away. Why does it matter? That's your immune system. That's your immune system right there. There's a white blood cell. Your CBC goes out the window, okay? And when you lose your white count, now you get sicker and sicker and sicker, you know? And I'm noticing blood draws are causing problem problems with women that are already dealing with immune problems. So they got symptoms, issues. They got Maybe they got chronic UTIs, bladder infections, interstitial cystitis. Maybe they got other issues chronic sinusitis, migraines, um, uh, weakness in limbs or just fatigue, or anxiety, depression. And the body's immune system's already under stress. We're already under stress. And then we get all this blood drawn when they don't have to draw that much. They can draw half vials. They can draw less and then separate the test. But you got to hear the podcast episode. And then the immune system goes <clears throat> out the window, out the window, out the window. 
um, your CBC goes out the window and then your bones have to go into overload and hopefully in three, four weeks you get your immune system back. By the time it comes back, you're already not feeling that good. So now you're going to another doctor and then they take blood again and then the vicious cycle keeps on going and going and going. That's it. Usually it takes months to recover your blood back. <clears throat> your bone marrow takes time to actually recover Recover it takes a long time, so very important to know. I'm reading the Lyme disease book right here, so I'm looking at it. And Lyme disease book, <laughs> medical medium, new edition. Okay, talking about Lyme, and here I got potatoes, cauliflower, steaming. We're talking about blood draws, talking about Lyme disease, talking about neurological symptoms a little bit too. Lori says the bloodletting show. Wow, that and chemtrails, that chemtrail show, so disturbing, but grateful to know. What can I do to help? My son is on a regular blood draw schedule. He believes it's necessary because doctor says so. You can still be on a regular blood draw schedule. Absolutely. Great doctor. Do the blood work. But will he learn what to ask the doctor? Because you can get your doctor to work with you on that. Instead of taking seven vials, full vials, maybe you can talk to the doctor and the doctor will take three and a half full vials or seven half vials. <clears throat> so the podcast explains all about it. Um, and no, you, Lori, you heard the podcast. You totally get it. Well, listen, it's his doctor. He do does what the doctor tells him. You know, listens to the doctor, totally get it. But if I was getting regular blood draws, which I'm not, but if I was, that's what I would do. I would, I would, you know, listen, I would definitely do what's in the <laughs> the podcast myself personally so I, I got the Lyme disease chapter open you guys I got the book right here we're steaming up some food I'm going to make you a dish uh, Marie, Poso, Marie Poso, uh, Posa when I had tubal pregnancy I had to have blood draw every day that's what they do that's what they do they do that so we'll talk about pregnancy right now for a second <clears throat> so I want to talk about that so, so here you are a mommy and you got a baby, right? And you're getting your blood drawn every single day, okay? Now, if we're all supposed to be about energy, um, vibrations, frequency, frequencies, um, sensitivities, if we're all so worried about subtle energies, different variables in life, and blood is being drawn from mommy continuously, or even partially, just maybe sometimes, right, when you're pregnant. And I have known a lot of pregnant women that get a lot of blood drawn, a lot. And what happens is that no one realizes, but it's stressful on the baby, okay? Because the baby can sense everything that's happening inside mommy. Everything. Every word mommy says, okay? Everything mommy does, everything daddy does, all right? The baby picks up on voices, the baby picks up on energy, the baby picks up on stress. So if mom is stressed out, the baby picks up on it. So when mom gets a needle jammed in her and mom's adrenals are flooding, they're just like, because you got the needle. The baby picks up on all that adrenaline surge, that adrenaline surge. If mom's in a bad mood and had a really bad day, or there's a disagreement somewhere, or something's happening, confrontation, the baby's going to pick that up. All that energy, right? So what happens is with the blood draw, they, they take way too much blood from pregnant women. They think pregnant women have plenty to spare. Lots more blood and lots to spare. I think that's probably one of the big, big, biggest mistakes with everything, especially in blood draw. It just shows you that research and science is so far behind and antiquated, and there's broken pieces of it in the system, you know, broken, broken aspects of it. And this is a big one right here when it comes down to pregnancies. First of all, um, a mommy's immune system is already t looking after the baby because the baby doesn't have the baby's own immune system yet. Very important to know. So mommy's immune system has to look after the baby. So when mommy's getting blood draw, 
all the time when pregnant, that's mommy's immune system, but that's the baby's immune system disappearing. Baby's immune system is disappearing. Baby's immune system is disappearing because mommy's immune system is the baby's immune system. And, um, and it just doesn't recuperate instantly. Like the, the mommy's immune system doesn't just all of a sudden, oh, it's fixed, it's great, it's all set. Now we're fine. That just, that's not reality, that's not how it works. So the baby feels all this. So really what they should be doing, now here's the problem. You might be thinking, well, hey, what a bad guy I am because I'm trying to tell pregnant women not to get blood tests and the system, no, that's not it at all. I want pregnant women to get their blood tested if that's what the doctor wants. Totally on board but they throw all the blood away. So as I showed you guys and demonstrated, a drop of blood is all they use in each test. They throw all that blood away. So why are they putting mommy under stress, removing her immune system, a big part of her immune system, risking the baby's life with these blood draws and the, and the protecting the baby when they're throwing away all the blood? When you think about that, it's really scary, right? Um, Talking about Lyme disease, talking about other stuff too. That's the whole point. But listen to the podcast episode. You guys, you guys listen. I, I, I don't ask much of you guys. I'm always at your service, like I always tell you. Okay. But please share the episode. Help other people protect themselves. It makes a difference. So the Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcasts, the uncensored version. Listen to the Blood Draw episode. But... Please share it with everybody you know and ask them to share it. This isn't just about, hey, it's a cool episode. Let me listen to it. I picked up some tips. Hey, it's coffee talk. He's got some guests on. He's talking about some cool stuff. He's talking about some aliens and spacecrafts. He's talking about 5G. No, this is, this is like really important, this episode. Like share it with everybody you know so we can actually protect people. So important. Um... <laughs> the Bambi is a deer responsible for Lyme disease. Well, talking about Lyme disease. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This little critter right here, everybody thinks causes Lyme disease. And there's the little tick right here. So that little tick on the Bambi right there, that must be why everybody's sick with Lyme disease, right? But that's not why everybody's sick with Lyme disease. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. The Lyme tick is going to get into the deer's eye. It's a terrible spot for a tick, by the way. And we are going to read a little bit about Lyme disease now. What else should I do on a Friday? <laughs> should I take care of myself? Should I go take a run? Should I take a bath? I mean, what should I do? No, I want to, <laughs> I want to give you guys information because it matters. And I'm hoping you guys hear the podcast episode to protect yourself. Seriously, it's that important. Let's travel back in time for a moment to November 1975 when multiple children and young adults were developing symptoms which alerted doctors to launch an investigation in the area around Lyme, Connecticut that gave Lyme disease its name, Lyme. First, let's remind ourselves of the technology back then, rotary phones. Go there. Rotary phones. So they knew the cause of Lyme back then in 1975 when they didn't know what causes any chronic illness, but they knew what caused Lyme disease. Interesting. Well, okay. Think about the technology back then. Uh, uh, there's a fire. There's a fire? Okay. Shit. There's a fire? All right. Hang on. Uh. Let's see, 911 didn't exist back then. Uh, we gotta hurry up. There's a, there's a fire? Technology is so really, it's so good back then. Technology is so good. All right, wait, hang on. Oh, oh, my finger slipped. Oh, I gotta start again. The fire's getting worse. Um, hold on. Okay, seven. All right, seven. Okay, seven. Okay, four. That was a quick one, because that's a short number. Four, two, that's a quick one. Oh, nine, nine, uh, nine again, and, and an eight. Uh, huh? Okay, I'm waiting here. We got a fire. 
technology so great in 1975, but they know why Lyme disease is Lyme disease back then when they don't even know why Lyme disease is Lyme disease now. I'm waiting here. Oh, yeah. Um, can you send a fire truck? Uh, what? You can't hear me? Okay. Fire truck. Okay. My address? Uh, okay. Well, okay. You're coming? Okay. Okay. Bye. I mean, that was technology at that time, right? Right? So you got all these kids sick. Med medical research and science didn't know what was wrong with anybody with chronic illness. And they still don't know now what's wrong with everybody with chronic illness. They still don't know now, right? But they had all the answers back then. Okay? First, let's remind ourselves of technology back then. I'm in Medical Medium, book one. Please, if you can, go to the library, get it for free. Or go to Amazon.com and pick up a revised and expanded edition, new edition, on sale at Amazon.com. First, let's remind ourselves of technology back then. Rotary phones on the kitchen wall. No such thing as voicemail, right? And Sony was releasing the first VCR. Guys, remember the VCR? The tapes were this big. They were like this big. You put the tape in. So I'm going to watch, honey, I shrunk the kids. <laughs> Or what am I going to watch, right? What were the movies back then? Not even, I mean, we're talking a long time ago. I'm thinking, well, 1975? Oh, we're going to put 9 to 5 in. Uh, 9 to 5, what's that movie? No, that's even, wait a minute. That's even later. This is 1975. What's 1975? We're going to put in, uh, I don't know, what? Dog Day Afternoon, Al Pacino. What, do you, what was the movies back then, 1975? I don't even know. So anyway... In the medical world, kids were getting their tonsils plucked out like they were apples, and they don't they didn't know why kids' tonsils were swelling. They still don't know why now. But wait a minute, technology was so advanced back then. We might have to make another phone call, okay? Uh uh, I don't feel good and I gotta get 911. Wait, there is no 911. This is 1975. I gotta get to the hospital. What's the hospital? honey? What's the hospital's number? What, did you find it in the book, the telephone book? What page are you on? What, what page are you on in the telephone book? Okay, what's the number of the hospital? Okay, 653. Okay, oh, hold on. 6539947999. I don't feel good though. 474. Four. Oh, my finger slipped. I got to start over again. What was it? I mean, that's, that's what we were looking at. Let's keep on going. Even today, there's no clinical understanding of what's behind tonsillitis. Technology has made leaps and bounds. Yeah, right? Your phone's better. But everybody's still sick. <laughs> everybody's still sick. You mean to tell me science research didn't fix everybody in the last 40 years? Uh, Rose, Teresa, we had 911 in 1975. Really? Because not, I think, everywhere in the United States had it. Um, but I'm glad you told me. Rose, thanks for being here. Awesome. Uh, well, and look, maybe we did have 911 on there, out there in 1975. I just remember, I think in 1981, I think, is when, where I live, we had 911. It was in the 80s, early 80s. Anyway... There's no clinical understanding of what's behind tonsillitis. While technology has made leaps and bounds, we still don't know why everybody's sick. And they still don't know why everybody's sick today. There we are. Nope. We did not have 911. Catherine, I, I, I didn't think we did. Um, yeah, we didn't have. Tammy says we didn't have 911. No, we didn't. Okay. We're sim I don't even know if we had it in 1981, 911. Maybe I'm wrong about it. It could have been like 1989. Were symptoms that have been seen... Okay, so there were symptoms that were seen for decades before the Lyme symptoms appeared, you guys. All right? And um, somehow in this area, the illness was treated as something new and recognizable. It Most likely because of compassionate doctors. They were trying to get to the bottom of a problem. Okay? So all around the world, everybody was suffering from these same symptoms... 
But they, for some reason, thought these symptoms started in Lyme, right? So townspeople began looking for a culprit, and they landed on the deer tick. Deer tick, you guys, right? The deer tick, okay? So the deer tick. Um, but back then, wait, we had 911 back in 19... I would probably say not in the, the entire country, very small areas if there ever was. I mean, I didn't have 911 in 75. No way. Um, so it landed on the deer tick because one of the patients reported seeing a tick a few weeks before he fell ill. That's like a train derailing for reasons unknown and a passenger mentioning a deer he saw grazing 50 miles back. The clues didn't add up. So, so you had a few people that were sick. They had some fatigue. You know, and uh, Jerry says 911 started 1976, but only for 17% of the country, right? Yeah, I mean, 1975, it wasn't there, right? But 76, it started. I'm, I'm, I don't think it got to, I don't think it got to where, I, you know, where I was until a long time. So yeah, so you guys, the whole thing with the tick comes down to this, right? So a deer tick, right, was seen a few weeks before, okay, someone got some Lyme symptoms, right? <laughs> During the summer, <laughs> right? And, but that's, that's not enough evidence. It's just not enough evidence. A deer tick is not enough evidence. So the culprit became all the deer, and that's what everybody focused on. It was all, Sharon said, Connecticut 911-1981. So Andrea says the nation's first 911 call was placed on February 16th, 1968 in Haleyville, Alabama, California's state statewide system initially launched in 1972, but wasn't fully completed until 1985. Yeah, I I remember most people getting like 911 by like 1989, somewhere around that. Yeah, yeah. And in Connecticut, it was 1981. Yeah, it's 1975, right? This this wasn't around. It's, it's isn't that interesting? All of that's interesting. So the deer was blamed for Lyme disease, okay? No proof. They never found the bacteria in a tick ever. Just so you know, I'm letting you guys know, they never found bacteria in a tick. They never found the Borrelia, never found the Bartonella in a tick ever. Never did. Never did. But um, Diana loves the visuals. It helps, right? So you guys, I'm steaming up potatoes, cauliflower, making the potato cauliflower mash. So the point all of this is, and I'm going to keep on going here. Karen says, crazy that they named the cause of Lyme from deer tick. How did, how scientific is that? Ha ha. I, exactly. That's how it works. So get back to this a little bit. Going back a little bit more. Okay. 1981, a doctor announced he discovered the missing link, a bacterium named Borrelia. That the ticks passed along to humans through their bites. They never found the tick that had the Borrelia. Never found that. But it was a theory, is what it was. He was lauded for his discovery, which led to a series of bacteria-focused tests and treatments for Lyme disease, which started the process of destroying a lot of lives. It was the perfect out for the medical authorities. No one liked ticks anyway. Do you guys like ticks? No one likes ticks. Everybody hates ticks. Molly, what do ticks test? Why do ticks, ticks test positive? But then when they say they're positive with Lyme, they're not tested positive with Borrelia or Bartonella. Um, not at all. They're te if people are tested for inflammation, that's how it's worked. So your blood gets removed and that blood gets tested with inflammation markers, kind of like the ANA, anti-nuclear antigen test. If you, if you show an elevation of inflammation, they, the Lyme lab puts the bacteria name along with it. They don't find the bacteria in your blood. They never did. Isn't that sad? And when you learn the truth about Lyme disease, it might really get you upset because you wonder why is there so many devious, sinister, corrupt situations in chronic illness. Why? 
there just is for a lot of reasons. One was to sell billions of dollars of antibiotics, actually more than billions of dollars of antibiotics now. So we got 50 years of Lyme disease, whatever it is now, 40 years, 40 plus years of Lyme disease. And with that 40 plus years of Lyme disease, they sold a lot of antibiotics. That's a big part of why it's done. It was a perfect out. Medical, med the medical authorities, no one liked ticks anyway. And the theory of a tick-borne illness fed into the fear of nature already present in society. Medical authorities felt they could give up on digging for an answer. So let's not dig for an answer anymore. Let's stop looking. Let's stop looking. It must have been that tick. Meanwhile, the world was suffering from the same symptoms. And much of the world, all the people, weren't around ticks. Ticks were only in certain areas of the world. But yet, there were lots of areas of the world where there were no ticks. No one saw a tick. No one ever had a tick bite in their life. The, their family members never had a tick bite in their life. But they were sick with these symptoms. See how it works? It's interesting. Unfortunately, all these tick discoveries were wrong. This is what you won't hear anywhere else. Lyme disease is not caused by ticks. And Lyme disease is not caused by Borrelia. And this broke Lyme disease. The world of Lyme disease is back, is this book. Doctors are now treating Lyme disease differently. They're treating Lyme disease with cat's claw, right? Antiviral, treating Lyme disease with cat's claw. Now doctors check for reactivated Epstein-Barr when they're searching for Lyme disease. So they all test patients now for Epstein-Barr because of this book. So now doctors are checking for Epstein-Barr when they're looking for Lyme. That's why you hear, oh, yeah, I got diagnosed with Lyme and Epstein-Barr. I got diagnosed with Lyme and Epstein-Barr. I got diagnosed with Lyme disease and Epstein-Barr. Everybody gets diagnosed now with EBV. Now, doctors never thought Epstein-Barr did anything besides gave you mono and went away, but the book taught on how it's reactivated. So this is the first book in the world that taught everybody that Epstein-Barr gets reactivated and causes real symptoms because they used to think Epstein-Barr just went away. Now we've changed the world of Lyme disease, including adding cat's claw into the regimen, which is really amazing. So does anything happen when you're bitten by a tick? Yes, good call, good question. Let's talk about that for a second, all right? So I'm sitting here minding my own business, right? And that tick gets you and it gets on your neck and you're like, what the heck? What is this? Honey, is that a tick? Take a look in the mirror. Is that a tick? That's a tick, right? Get the tweezers. Wait, you're not supposed to squeeze it, right? You're not supposed to squeeze it with the tweezers. You're supposed to try to pluck it out so you don't squeeze the bacteria back into you, right? So you're not supposed to squeeze the bacteria back into you, right? Um, okay, we'll just try to get out careful. Ow! 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 You got the tick? Oh no, the legs are left in me. I think the head of the tick's left in my neck. Ow! Ow! And what happens is when anything's left in you from an insect... Your body goes crazy. You get the bullseye. It's called the bite. It happens when a bee's stinger stays in you. If you don't take the bee stinger out and you leave that bee stinger in you, you're going to have one hell of a swollen uh, migraine rash. Heck of one. Like You're going to have that bullseye is what you're going to have. Spider bite? If the venom's in you or a little bit of particles, proteins from the spider's venom, there's the venom still in you, you got the bullseye. You get bit by something like a tick and a leg is still in you, a little bit of the head, you're going to get a bullseye. Yeah, you can get an infection if it's not cleaned up and addressed. And a lot of people, the head of the tick stays in, turns into an infection, but that's a staph infection. That's a staph infection. That's not Borrelia. That's a staph infection right there. That head of the tick stays in your neck. That tick gets pulled out. That's a staph infection. So many holes in the Lyme disease thing. It's so sad. It's so sad. So let's keep on talking. 
book explains all this. You guys got to read the Lyme chapter. It explains all the triggers, okay? And I'll go over the triggers a little bit with you too in a second. So let's go into this a little bit. When the research was taking place in the 1970s and 1980s, you'd suppose researchers would have realized the problem was happening nationwide and globally. And today you'd think someone would, would have wake up and realized that hundreds of thousands of people who have never been near a deer tick receive Lyme disease diagnosis, right? So think about science and research for a minute. Just think about this, you guys. I'm serious, okay? This is serious, right? A few kids came down with aches and pains, fatigue, right? Just think about this. Some compassionate doctors wanted to know what's going on, okay? Research and science did not pick up the phone and call other states to see if kids were dealing with the same thing. I'm going to say it again. How screwed up is this? Famous research and science, godly research and science, top doctors of Harvard, top doctors of Yale, doctor, top best doctors on the planet. Research and science didn't pick up the goddamn phone. <laughs> right? A friend of mine's grandmother said that the other day. She said, are you going to be talking about Lyme disease? And then she said, those damn ticks. <laughs> I said, I said, there's neither, it's not the ticks. It's like 92. I said, it's not the ticks. All right. They could have picked up the phone and called anybody else in the, any state in, in the country. They could have called overseas. But that's right. Technology, I don't think you could make an overseas phone call with this, could you? I highly doubt it. What, someone lives in the UK? Uh, never going to talk to them ever because this thing's not going to get there. Well, it is probably. It probably would reach them. The point is, though, is that they could have called anybody anywhere around the world and said, are you having problems? Is there any kids entering your hospital with fatigue and aches and pains? How about your town? How about your city? But that shows you research and science is so bad and was so bad then. And guess what? You think they fixed it? You think research and science was fixed? Like it's fixed, right? It's fixed? The only thing they fixed it with now is research and science focuses on the matcha tea. That's it. That's it. They focus on matcha tea. Women are laying in their beds, can't function, can't drive cars, crippling anxiety, aches and pains, total sickness, every, there's all the different conditions we have, and they're focused on matcha tea, once again. That's what research and science did. They First of all, they try to help out three kids back then in 1975. Said, so, well, it must be Lyme disease. That's what they said, right? They never found a bacteria in a tick. They came out with a theory, boom, completely bombarded hundreds of thousands of women and children with antibiotics ruining their lives all through the late 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And all they had to do was make a phone call and realize that if everywhere around the world they were suffering from the same symptoms, that maybe it wasn't a tick. It's actually sick, demented, when you think about it. So that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm just giving you guys the rundown. Um, all right. Uh, Elena says, I found a tick in my apartment about six months ago. Oh my God, I freaked out so bad. We called exterminator, sprayed all this stuff. All over, poor thing, didn't even die, so we sprayed again. Um, if it was me, I would not do the sprays. I wouldn't do the sprays. They won't kill, really, the bugs. The bugs will keep on coming back, and all you do is you're just spraying yourself. So, of course, you can spray if you like to. I'm not trying to tell you different. I'm not trying to tell you I'm just saying if it was me, I just would. I don't think I'd be doing all that spraying. 
pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, the whole bit. So, looking up some stuff, you guys. All right, a little bit more. <laughs> it's not bad for a Friday afternoon, right? We're just trying to have a little fun. But you guys, if you just got on here, I'm talking about neurological symptoms. It's not just Lyme disease. Here's I'm talking about Lyme disease in the moment, talking about deer ticks, talking about that. Got a meal I'm making right here, which is really great. But just so you know, if you haven't listened to Medical Medium Podcast at Apple Podcasts, please listen to the episode I'm not just trying to get you guys to listen to an episode. You know, like, hey, I want, I, I need them to listen to this episode. Like, I need them to listen to this episode. Like, I, like, why would I even care? It's like, I got no advertisers on there in commercials. <laughs> like, I'm not going to make any money if you listen to the episode like the other podcasters do. It's just, I just, I do that purposely. I, I just, I want you to listen to the Blood Draw, okay? Blood Draw, Bloodletting, Vampirism episode to really protect you. Okay, large, large blood draws can trigger Lyme. It can trigger every symptom to Lyme. It can trigger every symptom to any neurological symptom you are. It's a condition you've ever had or symptom. It can trigger a symptom to a symptom to a symptom you had years ago. It can trigger everything. So the b large blood draws, and that's what they're doing. They're taking, they're taking these large blood draws. And it's just going to set everybody back and set everybody back. And somebody said the other day, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony William, why didn't you tell us about this before? Why'd you let all these years go by and not tell us? I did tell you guys. Told you guys a bunch of times that no one listens. And they're all like, my doctor knows best, of course. I'm like, okay, your doctor knows best. I got I to gotta bow down. I got to bow down. I can't step up. Your doctor knows best. I'm sorry. I, I told you about the blood draws because they'll kill you. They'll kill you with those blood draws. But I get it. I get it. Doctor knows best. Knows he knows best. I shouldn't be helping. I shouldn't be sticking my nose where it shouldn't be. But I'm watching a lot of people get sick, so I decided to make it all about the platform for now. And like, if I got this little platform, then let me make sure you guys can just. I I gotta just scream. I gotta scream, scream to top my lungs, so I can try to protect you guys with everything I got. Because I've been telling you about the blood draws, but I, I don't think everybody's been hearing it. All right, Lyme disease symptoms. The confusion about Lyme disease symptoms is vast, vast. At this point, every autoimmune disease or mystery illness in this book and in existence has symptoms that have been linked to Lyme disease. Every single autoimmune symptom out there can be linked to Lyme disease. And Lyme disease is not bacteria. And I'm going to talk about that. Lyme disease is viral. So it's viral. That's the difference. So here's a bacteria. Okay. Here's a virus. Bacteria, virus. Bacteria doesn't pee and poop out a neurotoxin. Okay? Viruses release a neurotoxin. Neurological Lyme and every other neurological symptom people deal with is caused by viruses releasing a neurotoxin. Bacteria doesn't. Lyme is not bacteria. Just not. Autoimmune is viral. And you can get a Lyme diagnosis if you're autoimmune in a heartbeat. Go to a Lyme doctor, you got your Lyme diagnosis. And guess what? He's going to be testing for Epstein Barr because of medical medium. Millions of books going around, thousands of doctors with the books, they're testing for Epstein Barr now. They say Lyme because the Lyme, the Lyme lab won't let go. The Lyme lab, they won't let go. They don't want to say they were wrong. They don't. Because if they say they were wrong all this time, they're going to look really bad. So they have to keep what they're doing, even though it's viral. Why do blood draws kill? Over time. They cause severe deficiencies. Too much blood being drawn. And when you're sick with Lyme disease, like neurological Lyme, you're fighting a virus. And as your immune system gets pulled out of you and pulled out of you, pulled out of you, you get weaker and weaker and weaker. A lot of women have died. 
with chronic illness because they lost their immune system over time. They lost the battle to viruses because their blood kept on being drawn, drawn, drawn. Now, I want you to go to the doctor and get your blood drawn. Absolutely. But listen to the podcast so you can learn what you can ask for and do it right and learn the information. Tandy says, I listened to the podcast. It made me so angry. All of the BS happened to me 15 years ago. I'm so glad to have found you. I just bought three of your books, including the new and revised edition. New edition. Thank you, Tandy. It matters, this information. You know you know who knows about this information? I saw Dr. Fawn here. He's here tonight. Incredible. Dr. Sherry Green, another incredible doctor. Dr. Fawn, Dr. Green, two MDs, incredible MDs. Look, nobody knew about the blood draw thing. It's medical medium had to, you know, get the cannonball out. Uh, Dr. Fawn, per MM, the tick doesn't have the virus. The bite triggers the EBV. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, the tick doesn't carry the Epstein-Barr virus or the shingles virus or the HHV6 or the megalovirus. The tick, right, bites you, right? Tick bites you, whatever. The tick bites you, and then you get triggered because the tick bite can lower the immune system, especially if a little bit of a little bit of the proteins from the bite or the tick's head, really the tick's head, pieces of the tick's head, get lodged in everybody. That's how it's done. And that lowers the immune system. MC says, I'm not a doctor, but I'm here. Well, I'm glad you're here. Darlene says, what's happening in that frying pan? So let's talk about that now. And rightfully so, let's find out because, I, you know, okay, potatoes are done. So here's what's happening in this frying pan. I'm going to shut this frying pan off is what I'm going to do. Okay, you guys, shut the frying pan off for a second, all right? That okay? And I'm going to get a bowl like this. And I'm going to put these potatoes in this bowl. So I'm going to put these potatoes in here. These are definitely cooked. And I'm going to put the cauliflower in here too. So I'm just going to do this for a minute if you guys don't mind. And look, bed bug bites. Michelle L, bed, bed bugs. Yeah, that could be a trigger too. It's just bug bites can be triggers for a lot of people that are sensitive and their immune system's down. It just triggers. That's how it works. Spider bites. So I want to get this all in here, you guys. Just training a little bit of the water here, right? I did a steaming in the pan. Now you can use a steamer, right? Like... There's all kinds of different steamers you can get. I got some medicalmedium.com. I got kitchen stuff on medicalmedium.com, the directory, if you ever look for stuff. Right now, I was just doing it this way. It seemed to be just a kind of a fun, easy way to do it right now. So I'm getting all these potatoes and cauliflower in this pan. Um, the reason why I'm talking about Lyme disease today is because, by the way, we're live YouTube, live Facebook right now. I talk, I'm talking about it because I, I think the people with Lyme and anybody autoimmune with neurological symptoms, they suffer the worst when it comes down to blood draws. But you gotta catch that episode. But here's the thing, you think you're healthy, you think you're fine, you think you have nothing to worry about. Hey, nothing to worry about at all, who cares? Um, you know, I got. I don't have Lyme disease. I don't have neurological symptoms. I don't have these problems. I don't need to. I don't need to worry about it. I can get my blood drawn any old time, anytime I want to. But even five vials, full vials, done when you're healthy, still sets you back. You start getting deficiencies. Deficiencies lead to a lot of problems, and then we just get in trouble. Could you add onions to the potato and cauliflower? Absolutely. You know what? If you eat this meal because it's a fat-free meal, okay, the recipe's in here, but if you, if the recipe's in this Medical Medium New Edition, but if you eat a fat-free meal, 
because this is a fat-free meal and you want to put onions in here I'm fine just don't put oil in there don't put butter don't put don't put oil butter don't put avocado in here this is a fat-free meal for a reason because everybody's inundated they're fatting themselves to death that's what they're doing everybody's eating so much fat you know what's funny you guys you know like my friends they're like when are you gonna give me a little attention my friends are saying, right? They're like, when are you going to make me a meal? You've been cooking for your other friends. So all my friends are starting to get mad at me. Hey, Cindy Lou, good to see you. Glad you're here. I know you leave a lot of comments on the YouTube afterwards, and I'm honored you're doing that. Michelle, sweet and sour stir fry. <laughs> so I'm just mashing this up. There we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna mix a whole bunch of stuff in here too, you guys. Let me do that. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. So let me go into the recipe. So I'm in the recipe here. That's that's the cauliflower mash right there. So, so I'm reading the recipe, two teaspoons of garlic powder. So we're gonna do about two teaspoons of garlic powder. So my friends are like, when are you going to spend time with me? That's what they're all saying. They're like, huh? I said, you're spending time with all your other friends. Even on Fridays and Friday nights, almost every single day, every other day. And then you're working between that. So you're not spending any time with us. You're spending every time, all your time with them. So my friends are jealous about you guys. So it's like, like, well, you know. So now this is going to go in another bowl. The difference is I told my friends, look, I got my other friends, they're sick. They got like a lot of symptoms. They don't feel good. They're working on their healing process, you know, and I just want to be supportive. I need them to heal. I need them to get better and all these different demos and demonstrations and everything count. Sarah Ann, blood draws weaken your immune system. Is that what you just said? Yes, they weaken your immune system terribly and it takes time for your immune system to come back. And especially if you're already sick, you got fibro, don't feel good, you got lupus, you got multiple sclerosis, you got Lyme disease, you got some other condition the whole bit. Listen to the podcast episode for sure, but we get our immune system removed, that's your white blood count, that's your white blood count, that's your white blood count. It gets removed, they keep, then you get sicker, then they draw more blood, then you're at a specialist, he draws, he, he or she draws a whole bunch of another blood. I mean, it's just, it's the endless, endless, endless hell. And they just weaken you, weaken you. I mean, it's just uh, people pass out, all of it. And they just say, chalk it up. Chalk it up is what you got to do. You know, um, it's really incredible how it works. Looking for another bowl here. And so I'm going to make a nice. Now, I made a nice serving here for a whole bunch of people. When you donate blood, they draw a lot. What about that? They draw a, a pint. Okay, they draw a pint. So I'm going to put this and serve it in a nice serving bowl here. And I want you to listen to the podcast episode. I would like you to listen. I mean, if you can. They draw a pint and there's ways to protect yourself if you want to be a blood donor. Okay, I recommend friends that I have that aren't well and they're working on their healing process. They're finally working on some medical medium tools. I got friends that... They like, they just don't want to do anything. They just want to drink champagne and dance all night. And they don't want to, they want to eat pizza when they want to eat pizza. They don't want to eat parsley. And then when they finally get too sick, they end up calling me up and they're like, hey, uh, what do I do? Listen to the podcast, Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. It's important. So... Okay, I'm going to chop up some parsley. You don't need much. You can put a little more parsley if you want. Okay, my parsley. I use it as a leafy green. 
I, I like to teach about using these herbs as leafy greens. That's how you get better too. Using these herbs as leafy greens. You get better when you use these herbs as leafy greens. You start getting better. Tandy says the podcast is amazing. It's a life-saving podcast. What it's going to do for people is just, it's unbelievable. And you think nobody, nobody needs that podcast episode. Yeah, they do. They need that podcast episode. The world needs that podcast episode. A little parsley on top. Okay, just a little parsley. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to put a little sprinkle of paprika on top too. So just bear with me for a second. A little sprinkle of this on top too. Looks beautiful. So that's it right there. That's the potato cauliflower mash. Potato cauliflower is all mashed up in there. It's got the garlic powder. It's got the onion powder. I got a little parsley on top too. You can put more parsley. You can put more. Um, Jessica says, where can I find the podcast? Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. Link is in the description. Check it out. It's life-saving, life-protecting. You won't be disappointed. When you hear it, you're just going to be so pissed off. When you hear that podcast episode, you're just going to be so pissed off. Because truth, when you when you realize you've been screwed over, when we realize we've been screwed over and you hear it and know what is going wrong and you're like, what is go? How? What? What? Sherry, Dr. Sherry Green, amazing MD. Every doc on this planet needs that podcast episode. I mean... Sherry, right? It's that important, right? Look, you know, I want you guys to have like these opportunities. You know, I want you to have these, these like this information and knowledge. It doesn't help me that you guys have this knowledge. You know, to put out like a cannonball like that. This is not going to be fun for me. <laughs> but it's like, if you know what I mean. But. What I love is knowing that you guys are going to be able to protect your friends, your family, your children. And, you know, that means everything. So Lyme disease protocols. Let's head into the Lyme disease protocols a little bit. I just made this beautiful meal. I'm excited about that meal. Go back to Lyme for a little bit. I have the Lyme disease protocols in here. You can check out these protocols. So I just want to give you a rundown real quick, show, show it to you. And then there it is, Lyme disease. Boom. Bala B, hi MM, what are your thoughts on ticks carrying a parasite that lives inside the Lyme? Well, my thoughts are this, okay? I can tell you this, okay? A parasite in a tick is not the same thing as Borrelia in a tick and Lyme disease neurological symptoms. So that's important too. Another thing too is there's no tick-borne illness that ever caused neurological symptoms. The only tick-borne illness we've ever had in the United States or somewhere else globally has been a fever, but not neurological sickness, chronic long-term. So that doesn't exist. And parasites don't cause chronic illness. Parasites don't cause chronic symptoms. When you get a parasite in your intestinal tract, you either win the battle or you lose the battle. There's no in-between. So when you get a foodborne pathogen that's parasitical, your body throws it up, craps it out, throws it up, craps it out, throws it up, craps it out, throws it up, craps it out. You're in agony, pain, you're in the hospital, you're on painkillers, you throw it up, you crap it out, then they drug you with more painkillers until you win the battle. And in many cases, foodborne illness from eating some chicken in a restaurant has killed a lot of people and you lose the battle. There's no in between. Your body won't live with a parasite inside the gut. Worms are different though. Your body will live with a worm and you can have worms in your liver. You can have worms in your body. But the worms don't cause neurological symptoms either. Anyway, you guys, heading off to TikTok, heading off to IG. Go in there now. Please check out the podcast um, when you can. All right, really important. Link is in the description on the podcast episode. Don't miss it. Share it with somebody. I'm keeping lighthearted about it tonight, but that podcast episode can save someone's life long-term, short-term. So many people are affected by it. It's unbelievable. I'll see you guys on TikTok and IG. Head in there now, and then we might do some more IGs after that, letting you know like celery juice benefits, celery juice heals. We'll see. We got, we got some work to do tonight. 
I love you guys.